Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Super Cold Chaos here with the Shaman King Master of Spirits playthrough. We're going to be playing this game on normal mode, but we're going to be going through this thing 100%. Now, the game was made by Konami, who you may know as the guys who made Metal Gear Solid, Castlevania, Contra, a lot of good games. So of course, they must have done a pretty good job on this game, right? Well, yes and no. The first thing to note about this game is that uh, it's based off an anime. The anime was dubbed by 4Kids Entertainment, well known for their works on uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, Sonic, a lot, lot of anime, and a few games. But the thing to note is that uh, they don't really give you any opening information as far as uh, the anime here, they just kind of drop you with all these characters and expect you to know who these people are or what they're doing. This is kind of both a good and a bad thing. I mean, if you're a fan of Shaman King, this isn't too bad, since you already know who these people are. You already know what they're doing and why they're doing it. But if you're not necessarily a fan, then it's going to be over your head. You're not going to know anything, and you're kind of going to have to look it up. I'm pretty sure there are character descriptions in the instruction booklet, but... I mean, this is a Game Boy Advance game. I'm trying to get an instruction booklet like that... It's not going to be too easy. But as far as this opening cutscene goes, we're getting introduced to our main villain right away, which is kind of unf kind of weird. I mean, in most games they usually spend some time game letting you know the characters and whatnot. But here they just kind of there's the character, there's the main villain. Now our main villain here, Magister, is trying to collect an item called the Tomb of the Shaman from our main characters. Basically. It's a book of ultimate power, you know, uh, it's full of dark secrets, and if anybody has it, it could spell doom for the entire planet. Urgh. And what Magister is trying to do is that he's trying to bring back a uh, shaman king from 4,500 years ago, I think they said, named Mephius. I'll explain exactly what a shaman king is and exactly what the whole series is about later on, but for now, just kind of go with it. And you gotta admit, this guy has some pretty big balls. I mean, he just comes in against all of these main characters, all of which are pretty strong at this point. I think this uh, whole series takes place at the last third of the main series. But anyway, he just comes up and he basically asks, Hey, can I borrow a cup of Tomb of the Shaman? And now we get into the actual main plot, question mark, of the game where we have to collect the pages to the Tomb of the Shaman that were scattered all around in the fight. And you notice we lost a uh, sword earlier before, that was actually one of our main weapons, but uh, we're getting a wooden sword which is a replacement. So of course, uh, expect to be not that strong. I'm sorry if I'm going too fast through this stuff, it's just that I've played this game several times before and I basically know the story forwards, backwards, and sideways. If you need some time, just pause the video and read what you need. There's not really too much. And here we get into the uh, main game. Directional buttons. Move your character around. If you push down twice, you can do a back step. B swings. A jumps. Treasure chest gives you money, which you can use to buy items. And the R button lets you use your guardian ghost, which I'll get to in a little bit. See, the thing about Shaman King is that, uh, basically what the whole series is about is that it depicts a world where ghosts can interact with humans, however, only certain humans can talk to ghosts. And what, basically what a shaman is, they have the ability to team up with uh, ghosts to do various things. Our main character here, Yo, he can use uh, ghosts to fight with him, as well as other shamans that we'll be meeting later on in the series. All in all, the controls of this game are pretty basic. I mean, no complaints here. You can attack while ducking, you can attack in the air, you can do combos, do more damage, and your sword has a pretty good reach. Although, here's one thing that kind of uh, seems interesting. 2D side-scrolling, fighting, uh, some RPG elements, if you push the uh, pause button, you can bring up the status menu, as well as... Uh, well, I'll explain what some of this stuff is later, but anyways. RPG elements, side-scrolling combat, action RPG, what does it sound like to you? 
If you said Castlevania Symphony of the Night, Legend of Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link, or Metroid, then you win the international award of Herp Derp. However, if you said Tomba, the obscure PlayStation 1 game, then I, you're probably not going to be my best friend. Halo oh, one thing I forgot to mention about Amitamaru, though, you know, if you notice the little R right next to his name, uh, the attack will take up that little blue energy. We keep using it, and we won't be able to use it. Instead, you'll just go, huh? However, this bar does refill over time, and there are ways to make it, uh, to increase its potential and to uh, increase its ability to recharge faster. But we'll be getting into that stuff later. Of course, right now, playing on normal mode, enemies die pretty fast. You've noticed that so far we've only been fighting imps that die in one hit. However, you can play the game on hard mode. You don't have to do anything to unlock hard mode, but as the name would imply, hard mode means that enemies take more damage to die and they can dish out more damage. And one thing I forgot to mention is that at the end of every level, you'll recover all. I think it's half of your health. This boxer dies if you do a uh, low attack and hit him with a Mitamaru. And you notice that we got a ghost from him named Goosey Kenji. Now here's the main thing about Master of Spirits that's pretty interesting. You can, like, you can collect different guardian ghosts in different ways, and you can use them to help you battle. As you notice, Goosey Kenji can do a rapid punch attack. It doesn't do a lot of damage, but it does continuous damage, which builds up. And if you notice, if we do a low attack, it does less damage than if we did it in standing up. And of course, moving through water slows down your movements. But, uh, this works differently, which is kind of weird. That's the strange thing about water, but we'll get to that later. Another thing to note is that if you hit select, you can cycle through all your different decks of Guardian Ghosts. You can hold, I believe, four decks of Ghost. And we'll get to how that works later. Right now, we just collect an item called a Magatama Bead. This is going to be used to uh, upgrade our fighting potential. And if you try to hit this boxer guy while he's blocking, then he'll just do no damage. All in all, this game really isn't too hard. I mean, platforming is pretty simple. Combat is pretty easy to understand. But with the different Guardian Ghosts, it will get a little bit more complicated. These flames are also pretty easy to get rid of, however on hard mode they can be a little annoying. Right now we just got uh, an item called Sushi. This thing can recover some health from you. Right now it only recovers 20 health, but we can collect items later on that can recover more health. After this level I'll show you the shop where you can buy more items. But for now, let's just kind of play normally. I think in uh, hard mode, these uh, imps actually take two hits to die. And if you look right down here, you'll notice a uh, pillar of fire. Of course, we can't get that Magatama bead because the fire is blocking us, and if you touch it, you take damage. No shit. But since there's uh, not really anything to talk about, I think I should probably bring up a little bit more info about the Shaman King series. Uh, the manga was written by a man named Hiroyuki Takai. As far as uh, manga goes, or manga, however you pronounce it, he's not really that well known. Shaman King is basically the number one series most known for. Here we are introduced to another guardian ghost that we can equip called Chim Chimimoryu. It doesn't take up too much Furioku, but it does take up uh, another item, but we'll get to that later. See, these things don't do a lot of damage, but they can slow down enemies. Very useful, depending on the situation. Anyways, as far as Hiroyuki Takai, what he's been doing, uh, aside from Shaman King, he's probably also well known for working with esteemed comic book writer Stan Lee on a series called Ultima. I'm not kidding. The series is about uh, robots fighting. It's kind of like Zatch Bell, only, you know, with Stan Lee in it. And here we're introduced to a new set of enemies. These eagles will hone in on you, pretty much and just kind of zoom towards you. We just got another Guardian Ghost. See, you can get a lot of Guardian Ghosts in this game. And if you noticed the numbers to the left, those indicate uh, the uh, number of them. You know, right now we've got the 64th Guardian Ghost already, which gives you the main idea that there's kind of a lot of Ghosts here. And that's basically how you get 100% in this game, collecting all the Magatama Beads, collecting all the Tomb of the Shaman pages, and getting all the Guardian Ghosts. And we'll be doing all of that, trust me. Another thing to note is that the uh, boxer dude and the singer that we've been fighting 
Those guys actually appear in the manga and anime. I'm not gonna spoil it for you, but uh, I highly recommend that you pick up either the manga or the an or watch the anime. And here we have headphones. They can't really do anything now, but uh, later on I'll show you how they work. We already meant those uh, large imps before. They take three hits to die. Shouldn't be too bad if you use a Mitamaru. We're almost at the end of the level, and trust me, there's something worthwhile at the end of this level. I guess one thing I should also mention is basically the main idea of Shaman King. Basically, how Shaman King works is that aside from the whole Shaman thing, which I have to admit is a pretty interesting idea, the main series is about a fighting tournament that takes place every several thousand years. Shamans gather together and duke it out to decide who gets a guardian ghost known as the King of Spirits. The King of Spirits is basically God, and whoever gets the King of Spirits becomes Shaman King. So basically they become a god among men. And with all the colorful characters and all their different abilities, it's actually pretty good for a, your pretty standard issue shonen manga. I mean, think Dragon Ball Z, but uh, with more ghosts. Even though Dragon Ball Z did have a lot to do with ghosts. The samurai are also pretty difficult to fight, but eh, just a few hits to take them down. Before we go to this area, we should use some sushi. Like I said, it doesn't recover that much, but hey, it works. And here we're introduced to one of the uh, major side characters in the series, Ryo. A thing to note about Ryo is that uh, he's voiced by Sean Shemmel, who you may know as Goku in the anime. If I didn't mention this before, the anime was dubbed by 4Kids Entertainment before they went censor crazy. And this wouldn't be an anime game if we didn't have to fight major characters. Although apparently being possessed by the devil means you get you get red eyes. This fight is pretty easy. His main attacks are using that sword swing, which you can dodge by ducking. He also does this sort of version of your halo bump, but you can uh, just come in and counteract him. Another thing to note about the Halo Bump is that you can use it to juggle enemies in the air. If you're really scared, you can... If you're really skilled, you can use two Halo Bumps to juggle somebody. At about the halfway point, he gets a new attack as well. I'm not sure when he's gonna do it. Right now. He's gonna run off to the side of the screen and charge at you with his motorcycle. You also leave behind bombs that you can destroy, not too bad. I'm waiting for him to do that motorcycle attack again, so that way I can show you something interesting. You see, you can actually destroy the motorcycle by using the halo bump. It takes some pretty good timing, but it's not too hard to do. And with that we get the first page of the Tomb of the Shaman. And we also get something interesting from Ryo. After a little bit of banter, explaining why he was possessed, I guess? Yeah, it turns out Magister has the ability to possess people just by looking at them. Remember that, because later on it's going to be a kind of a plot hole. Yes, he's going to give us his guardian ghost, Tokagero, which will give us his attack, Big Thumb. But we'll show you what it does later on. Yeah, he mentions that it can move heavy objects, but like I said, we'll show you exactly how it works later. And with that, we're going to end part one here. I want to thank you for watching, and next time we're going to move on to another area, find more pages of the Tomb of the Shaman, and more Guardian Ghosts. See you later.